Hi guys, welcome to today's class, today's lecture, whatever you talk, call it. It's a session I am conducting to teach you little bit about C++ classes. So uh, we are in this class actually, I am going to walk you through the process of creating a simple shopping cart application using C++. Huh. Sounds like a familiar project, right? You could use at your school. You can showcase your school by learning these exercises. So let's try to think about a shopping cart. What is a shopping cart? So a shopping cart is like if you go to an e-commerce store online, you have, you know, I mean, there are many, including the big ones. You choose the items, then add those to the shopping cart, and then you check out. But here, we are not uh, focusing on checking out stuff. We are just focusing on adding, removing, and modifying items on the card. So our definition of the problem starts with defining the shopping cart class. In the C++ or any object-oriented programming, a class is a blueprint of an object. So we are creating the blueprint of your shopping cart object. See the screen here. So this is your shopping cart class. Here you ha I have created two constructors. These are the public uh, methods and uh, attributes. And you can see two constructors here and several functions. And these are the private attributes. Do you know what is the difference between public and private? Private attributes are those that you cannot access from outside of the class. But they can be accessed from the member functions of the class. So when we design a C++ class, we first start with a header file where we have bare minimum definition of the class, the basic outline of the class. So you see, this is these are the private uh, functions and uh, variables. So you see here, we have two private functions, customer name, current date, and the items on the card, card items. So this is a vector. So we had to include the string function, string package, because we are using string. We are including the vector So, because we are using the vector. So there is a class for the item. For the time being, let us put it aside. We will get back to it. So. So this is our shopping cart object, I mean class, customer name, current date, and the items. These are the things that we need to deal with our shopping cart. And what are the methods that I am going to add here? First of all, there are two constructors. This first one, I will show you what is there. But then basically constructors are used to build the object. And then we have the methods like customer name, date. These are the value returning functions. The first, these two. Then we have add item, remove item, modify item, number of items in cart, cost of the cart, print total, print descriptions. Let's go to the situation how we are defining the items. So we call it item to purchase. 
so this is another header file the definition of the class which is item to purchase so these are the items for example you are buying a box of apple that's an item suppose you are buying a uh, a bottle of coca cola that's another item so and so on so on so here the private variables are the name of the item underscore name the price of the item and the quantity of the item how many items do you want and the description so the public functions are items to purchase these are the <coughs> these are the basic constructors then we have set name look uh, look out for the uh, parameters or the arguments these are this is the name string argument then we have the price set price so these are the mutator function we are setting name and price using set name and set price similarly set quantity this is also a mutator for the quantity set description this is also description for the uh, for the value for the name for the string description then we have the accessor functions these are the accessor functions string name double price int quantity string description and then we have two utility functions print item cost so basically it will it will print the cost of the cost of the item given item print item description let's go to the c++ implementation of this uh, class here we started by including the item to purchase.h file you have to include it because that contains the definition of the class then you have to include input output stream because we are going to use the c out and then we are using the namespace std this is very standard when you use the c++ libraries then this is the default constructor and by the requirement given by the the customer i mean the, the people who asked us to program it so we have to put the name to be equals none then the price to be equals zero the quantity to be zero and description none so these are the bare metal uh, constructor for item to purchase but then you can also add a constructor with the specific value of the name description price and quantity so you can uh, so you are setting the private variable name to be equals this name the private variable description to be equals description private variable price to be equals price here and private variable quantity to be equals quantity you should note one thing when i am implementing the constructor or class you have to use this syntax this keyword i mean the class name then colon colon and then you have to put the constructor name or the method name so that's the convention that's how the c++ compiler understands that this is a member function for that items to purchase class if you don't do that then you will get an error it will the program will fail to understand any variable like you put on the left hand side then you put set description as void so this is a non value returning function item to purchase set description and then you put the string the argument description and you are making the private variable description equals description so this is the mutator function for the description similarly this is the mutator function for the name so you put void item to purchase colon colon set name 
argument is string name and then underscore name equals name. In the exactly same way you put the mutator, you write the mutator for set price. Then you do for the set quantity, the mutator for the quantity. Now comes the terms of accessors. Here, you are creating a function, a member function for the class item to purchase named name and it's a return type is string. So you are returning name, underscore name, which is the private variable of the class, but it is accessible, right? Because it's a member function. In an exactly same way, you write item to purchase price, return price. Similarly, quantity, you are returning the quantity. Exactly same way, description, you are returning the description. Then you have the print item cost. So you are, what are you printing here? The name of the item, then a space, quantity, how many items do you want for that? Then at the rate of dollar, whatever price you want. Uh, I mean, you are buying it. Then equals the, the quantity times price. That is the total cost of that particular item on the shopping cart. Then you are also using an utility function, uh, print item description. So see out, you are see outing the name and the description. Is it understandable now? So this is the class I am using. Now let's go to go again to the shopping cart as we started with. So you see the items to purchase are used here, here, here. So let's go to the implementation of the shopping cart. So we started with the constructor and our as per our requirement, the customer name is none and the current date is uh, putting an ad hoc date, January 1, 2016. Then we have shopping card parameterized constructor, which is, which has two parameters, customer name and current date. And you have customer name equals cast name from here. Similarly, current date is here. Then we have the member functions. So these are the accessor function. This is the accessor function for the customer name, which has a return type of string. So we are returning the customer name. Then the date. This is an accessor function for the date. We are returning underscore current date, the private member variable. Now comes the mutators. We are adding the items. So this is a method for adding the item and it's a non-value returning function. So you are your argument is item to purchase item. So an item is added and then simply you are adding uh, that item to the vector cart items. And we are using the push back function for the vector. Now you have the remove item, which is if it is, so we define a Boolean variable false, and then you go through uh, different. Uh, levels like you define the items so you are basically finding the items on the cart and if your item name matches with the item on the cart you are just removing it you are saying found equals true so if it is not found at all you are giving out a, a error function error message similarly the modify item looks like this you have defined a variable found to be false. Now 
let's go over again the so we are modifying the item so we defined as usual the function the the variable called found which is false then we are running a for loop so we do um, unsigned long integer i equals zero to uh, card item size under this for for loop uh, we do validation of different things like if the quantity is not equals the default value if the price is not equals default value and description is not equals default value then we set the corresponding quantity price and description to be the value that we pass and then uh, we we set the new values new new values for those items and uh, then we call found equals true and again similarly found is false then we say that item not found in the cart nothing happened so the next part is the number of items in the cart so we are trying to get some aggregation here and in this function what we do is that we are running a loop and then we uh, basically adding up the quantities on the cart i mean all the items like you you shopped five mangoes uh, three, uh, let us say, three cans of Coke, and so on. So then, I mean, for these two, you have five plus three equals eight. So that is that, this return Q. Finally, we have a uh, cost of cart, that is uh, basically quantity times price for each item on the cart. So we are, uh, cre we created a running sum, and this is the initialized, I mean, double cost equals 0 plus 0 0.0. And then we added up everything. Finally, we can, we return the cost, which is a double. Again, just note that everywhere you have to use the, you have to declare the member function. If you miss to specify this shopping cart, colon, colon, then you will get an error. Then we have the print total, which is uh, basically uh, customer name. And then we, we put customer names and then the current debt. And then we do, uh, if we have the, there is no item on the card, then we show, we say that shopping cart is empty. And then uh, in the for loop, uh, we are basically creating all the items and uh, printed the cost, printed the cost of the item. This print item cost is found from the item to purchase that is here, print item cost is here. So here, this function. So that's what we are uh, printing here, using here. So that is, uh, th that's how we uh, calculate the print total Finally, uh, we also uh, print the descriptions, uh, which is also C out, and then the customer name and uh, the current date, and then we put a header uh, items description, and then we run a for loop over all the items and we print the descriptions. And again, we are using print item description function from the item to purchase class, which is here. So here this one we are using. So one important thing you should note that this is not, I mean, this one, uh, this print item description or print item cost, these are not member function for the shopping cart. So that's why we had to instantiate, we had to uh, basically define the item. Uh, and I mean, we had to instantiate the item and then make it equals uh, the particular item for that particular, uh, I mean, for, for that cart, ith item. And then we had to uh, specify the item cost or item description by issuing the statement item dot print item cost. So that's how it works. And finally, in the main program, let's go to the main program now. 
So the main program starts with uh, the header, input output string, stream, then the string, item to purchase, uh, shopping cart, the, all, all the headers that we created. Then we do the print menu. So we created a separate function called print menu where we uh, printed these things like menu and then the options. A for add item to the cart, D for remove item from cart, C for change item quantity, I for output items description, O for output shopping cart, Q for quit, and then also choose an option. So let's see what happens in the main program. That starts from line 21. So here we define customer name and date. Then we ent then we uh, use the get line function to uh, basically get the customer name and the date from the user's input. That inputs that user has provided. You have to use get line in order to avoid uh, any uh, skipping of those. Uh, the, the variables, the, the, the inputs from the user. So you have to use get line, always remember here. Then we have, um, we printed the customer name and today's date. Then we created an instance of the shopping cart with these two variables. So this goes back, goes, I mean, this takes us back to this particular constructor, this one. So our customer name is defined as the customer name that we defined in the function and the current date is also there. So go back to the main. So this is the one. Then we define a string menu and uh, we call the print menu function, this one. Then we uh, basically collected the input menu now we run a while loop over the menu when menu until menu is not equals uh, menu equals uh, Q. So when the menu equals Q, it will stop. So you put uh, different criteria here. So for menu equals A, we put uh, the we ask the uh, I mean we ask the the user to input certain things like the uh, the name, I name, and also the description, item name, item description, item price, item quantity. There are four variables we are including. And then we instantiated item to purchase using this particular constructor, name, description, price, and quantity. So this goes back to here, this constructor or specifically implementation wise, this one. Okay, so let's go back to the main function. So once we do that, then we get this item, then in the shopping cart, we use the add item function. So here, shopping cart, we have the add item function, we are using this one, or here if you see the, the C++ program, you can uh, add it here. So then you have the D option that is the delete, remove the item from the cart. So you have, um, you specify the name by calling the get line function. Then you remove the item name, then uh, put C out end line and then uh, print menu. So remove item again refers to this one, this function from the shopping cart and then specifically this one. We already explained it. So that's all about the main, uh, I mean, that's all about the delete, remove. Then we have the modify or change. So change is done in this way. Again, we pass the name as an argument we ask the get line, uh, then user provided the input. Always use the C ignore things in order to um, in order to just uh, avoid any inconsistency with the input. Anything that left over that is left over from your previous input 
will be ignored here. Then we do uh, quantity. I mean, that is that is an input as well. Then we instantiated item to price purchase and not here. We are open like item to purchase. We use the default constructor, which is this one where we simply uh, instantiated everything to the default values. Right. Then we set the variables uh, as per the inputs like name quantity. I mean, we could have done other things, but here in this, I mean, rather than name and quantity, we could have updated the description. We did not do that because uh, our requirement was to input, I mean, input only the quantity and the name. That's it, nothing else. Choose an item from your shopping cart and just change the quantity. That's it, nothing else. So then we have also print the print menu. Then uh, the output shopping cart is this menu. So we are using print total function in the shopping cart class, which is here. Print total and implementation wise. This one is the print total. We already explained about it. So once we are done with it, then I, which is the menu I, which is the output items description. So print description is a function that we use. So here print description and then we implemented it here. We discussed about it, right? Then we call it here. And finally, if it is Q, if it is none of um, like uh, A, D, C, O, I, I mean, as indicated in the menu option, these ones, then you just skip it. I mean, you should, you just tell choose an option. And then you, of course, you cited the menu again. You, you, you input the menu again. So that's all. I mean, that's, that's where the program runs. Let's give it a test run. So for the test run, let us uh, compile it first. So here is this one. So we have to do G++, then item to purchase, shopping cart, and main.cpp. So these are the C++ codes that we have written, three C++ code. So we have to give this uh, compiler. I mean, you have to run it against the compiler. I'm running it in a very basic way. I'm not passing any parameters to the compiler. So that's, that's all it compiled nicely. So we do a.exe, that's the default executable name. So enter customer name, John DOE is our customer name. Today's date, uh, today's date is uh, February 6, 2023. Uh, let me write it in a better way. February 6, 2023. Then add an item to the cart. So let's add it. So item name is banana. Let us say we bought uh, six boxes of banana. Banana boxes and we are buying six boxes of banana. Then, um, oh, that is $6. I put it in the wrong way. No banana is $6. I mean, it depends on how many bananas you are purchasing. So let's say quantity is six. Then you add another item to the cart. Let us say we this time we are adding uh, Coca Coke. Description is uh, basically Diet Coke, let us say. Then price is, let us say, a, a, a full box, two full boxes. Let us say uh, price is uh, $5. And quantity is um, two boxes. Then let us um, basically change something on the on your shopping cart, or let's remove it. D. Um, let's remove the uh, coke. So let's see what is on our output shopping cart. So you can see. 
only bananas are there clearly then let us uh, change the item so let's say banana is being changed enter the quantity new quantity let us say three six instead of six i decided to buy only two so let's see what is my final shopping cart so just six times two twelve and let's see descriptions banana boxes and then we are done so let's quit so that's all right that's all the function of this code so we have written three c plus plus codes we have created three classes two sorry two classes the item to purchase then we uh, created shopping card dot h and uh, then we created the c plus plus file shopping card dot cpp and item to purchase cpp and then the main function of course and we have we shown you we have showed you the execution of the code it's easy right so happy coding and if you like the video please uh, like it comment it share it to your friends with your friends and if you want i can give you the link to the code please comment on 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 the please subscribe my channel and comment on the um, on, on on the video i will uh, very happy more than happy to provide you with the link to the code okay thank you so much next time we will show more problems solutions